What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUp Essentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to quickly create a conceptual plan in SketchUp and Layout. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the plan that's on the SketchUp homepage as a base um, just to model something kind of like this so you can kind of see how they've created what they've created. So if you want to see what it looks like, you can just scroll down and notice how they've got this building right here where they're kind of push-pulling openings into the building. And then later on, they're adding a little bit of a site and then they're taking it into layout to create this kind of like conceptual plan right here. So I thought that we could do something similar. All right, so to start off, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the footprint of my building. And so I'm gonna use the rectangle tool to do that. So I'm just gonna tap R, and then I'm just gonna draw a 30 foot by 30 foot rectangle like this. So now I've got kind of the base shape of my object. And so what I want to do in this situation is I want to push pull this in so that my exterior walls have some thickness. And in this particular case, the walls of this building are pretty thick. So we're going to go ahead and make these 12 inches. So we're going to use the offset tool to do that. And then we're going to push pull our wall up. And in this case, let's say that we want our floor to floor elevations to be 12 feet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push pull this up 12 feet like this. Then I'm going to tap the control key and I'm going to do this again. So I'm going to do it another 12 feet and then I'll do it another 12 feet. Whoops. And so what tapping the control key does is that puts you in create new face mode. So that gives me the lines and divisions here so that I can see where my different floors would be or my different stories would be in my building. So that gives me kind of a rough feel for what this should look like. So the next thing we need to do is we need to create our openings. So in order to create our openings, what we're going to do is we're going to um, basically just kind of rough these in, right? So I'm assuming this is going to be an eight foot tall window, maybe like six feet wide, something like that. They're pretty big windows on that uh, model that they have on that page. And so from here, you could either come in here and draw your windows manually, which is pretty easy to do. So something like this, and then something like this. And then we're just going to use the push pull tool to push pull these to the back side like this. So when I do that, notice how that's going to, if I move my mouse to where it says on face, when I click, what it's going to do is it's going to delete out the surface that was in that window right here. And then we're just going to draw this back in um, because that appears to be what they've done on the SketchUp model that's in here. And I'm just going to delete out these faces. So then, I've got this kind of shape in here, and there's a couple different ways that we can handle this next part. I'm just going to manually draw some more windows in real quick. And one thing that we could do if we wanted to is we could use the tape measure tool in order to create some guides along this wall. So notice how if I tap the control key, I've got the little plus button in here. That puts me in create guide mode. That allows me to create some guides so I can see the height of my windows. So I can drop some guides on here really quick so I can make sure that I'm drawing these to the same height um, as the windows on the other side. So for example, this one, I might want a little bit wider window up here, a little bit narrower window down here, but notice how that's really easy to do because I have all of these guides in here. And then I can just erase out the guides like this. So then we're just gonna push pull these to the back side of the wall. Notice how if I double click on these, it's going to push pull to whatever the last push pull distance was um, that I push pulled um, that the tool used. So double clicking can save you a lot of time when you're creating these windows. And so the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna draw a rectangle across the inside on my different levels just so I have a floor. And again, we're going very conceptual right now. So I'm not too worried about grouping anything or anything like that, just because this is supposed to be a really fast, really high level model. Um, if you're doing anything more detailed, you're definitely going to want to do some grouping. But for today's video, we're not gonna worry too much about that. So then I'm gonna unhide everything like this. So now what we need to do is we need to add our windows that are gonna sit in our frames. And so what I am gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna select this whole thing, I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna group it. That way this geometry isn't going to group with everything else um, or merge with everything else. That'll make changes later a lot easier. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a rectangle in here, then I'm gonna do a slight offset. So I'm gonna offset in this end, maybe like two inches or something like that. And then I'm just going to push pull this surface right here. And so then I'm just gonna push pull this window in maybe like 
two inches or something like that so that I have an actual frame sitting in this opening. But then I'm gonna triple click on everything and I'm just gonna make this a group. Now if you have repeating windows, which I don't, you could make these a component and reuse them. Um, so that's something to be aware of, but I'm not gonna worry too much about that for right now just because I didn't really draw any of these to the same I didn't really draw any of these to the same dimensions, so I'm just going to make these a group, but you could make them a component as well. So then we're just gonna draw a rectangle. You know what we wanna do with this one is we actually want this to be a door. So I'm going to push pull. I'm gonna double click in here and I'm gonna push pull this down like this so that this is more of a door opening. But then we're just gonna do the same thing for right now. We'll just draw this as if it was made of glass and we'll just assume that it's something that could kind of like rotate out. And then real quick, I'll just come in here and draw these other windows. And so then the other thing they've done is they've also drawn kind of a rooftop style patio thing up here. So we're gonna do the same thing. So I'm just going to draw a surface right here. And then I'm gonna push pull it down a little bit, maybe like two foot, six inches so that I've got this little shape in here. And the windows are kind of odd. And uh, notice how they have them kind of odd on here as well. So there is kind of like this back pan piece in here um, that would keep you from seeing the wall that's behind it. So that's a little bit of a weird design, but we'll go ahead and just kind of leave it for right now. So we've got our rooftop patio in here, but then what I want to do is I want to draw some kind of like short walls, like a planner. So I'm just going to take this whole thing and group it again so the geometry is not going to merge with itself but then we'll just draw a very simple planter shape up here like this and then we're just going to push pull it up we'll offset it in maybe like six inches and then we'll push pull it back down so now we've got this planter on the roof and one thing you could do when you're working on these windows is you could also come in here and apply a glass material. So in general, there's not a ton of uh, there's not a ton of materials applied to this, just because uh, it's fairly conceptual. It's kind of like diagrammatic, but um, sometimes it does help to have kind of a uh, kind of a contrast like this with some colors. So we're going to go ahead and just add the blue colors on these walls right here. So now we've got our building pretty close to created. Now let's go ahead and let's model out a little bit of a site. And so to model out the site, what we're going to do is we're going to um, use sandbox tools in order to create kind of a sandbox that we can work with. And so in order to do that, I'm just going to create a guide that comes off of this wall, maybe like 20 feet right here. Maybe like eight feet right here. And then over here, we'll do maybe like 16 feet. And so what we wanna do is we wanna activate sandbox tools, which is an extension contained inside of SketchUp. And I'm just going to create a terrain mesh right here. And I'm gonna set my grid spacing to maybe, we'll call it five feet for right now. So I'm just gonna type in a value of five feet. Well then what I can do is I can click and I can create this terrain really quickly. Or this sandbox that we can then use to generate terrain is really what we want to do. But I'm just going to double click in here. I'm going to triple click and right click and reverse like this. And so what that's done is that's given us a terrain right here. Well, then we can just take that terrain and we can move it up and down using the smooth tool. And the smooth tool is going to allow us to click and drag like this in order to just add a little bit of detail to our site right here. So we don't want anything too crazy or anything like that. Just enough to give us a little bit of up and down in here. And this may or may not actually even show up in our plan, but at least we've got it created here. And so one other thing I might do is I might add a slab on the base of my building um, so that these aren't on the exact same level. So I'm just going to use the rectangle tool to draw a rectangle. We're just going to push pull this down maybe six inches. It would probably actually be a four inch slab, but that's okay. So we'll triple click, make that a group, and we'll just move this back up. All right, so then if we look at this, notice how the other thing we have is we have a little bit of a context model back here, and then some trees and some shrubs. And we can add those fairly quickly just by modeling them out in the background. So for example, let's say that we had our wall back here, and I'm gonna move my default model up here, but we can just model this wall out very quickly. So I'm assuming the stairwell 
or the stair. It's going to be like six feet wide. And then we're going to have a wall that goes up to about the height of our first floor right here. So first off, I'm just going to rough out the wall shape right here. Then on the front side, I'm assuming this is where my stair is going to be. So I'm going to have a stair that runs up here. And so I'm assuming that we're going to have a little wall right here. And then real quick, let's model out our stair. So our stair needs to be 12 foot, six inches high. And I'm assuming each one of my treads is maybe gonna be 12 inches deep. So something like this. So I'm just gonna model out a series of rectangles here. So I've got one, I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode and I'm going to create a copy, then I'm gonna type in times 12 and hit the enter key. So then what that's gonna allow us to do is that's gonna allow us to push pull this up and actually I don't even want that because I don't want this to go all the way to the top of the wall. I want this to go maybe like three foot six inches below. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just going to create a guide. And so we're just gonna push pull these up on the back side. All right, so actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push pull this up eight foot, six inches, like this. And so what that's done is that's given me my treads. Well, then I can use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy like this. We're gonna type in like times, we'll say 17, like this. And then what that's gonna allow us to do is that's gonna allow us to quickly draw a wall in here. And so probably what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a wall that's going to kind of slope down like this. And so in order to get that slope, I'm just gonna draw a line like this. I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode and copy that up here. And then I can just use inferencing to continue that line down to wherever we want our wall to end. In this case, I might pick something like this. Then I'll just draw a line across. And then I'll push pull this out and I'll create a wall that's 12 inches thick. And then you can come in here and you can erase out these extra edges. So now I've got a stair and a sight wall and we can go ahead and push pull this across a little bit. And then I'm gonna create another wall right here just by push pulling this maybe like six inches you know, we'll call it 12 inches. And then we'll push pull this back right here. So again, all we're doing is we're adding a little bit of context that's going to show up in here. Um, this, for example, is just going to basically be like a plaza area up above. So we can just draw a surface. And so then we can go to the 3D warehouse and we can bring in some trees. So I'm gonna look for 2D plants and I'm gonna type in an author of SketchUp under my advanced, because what I want is I want SketchUp's 2D tree collection. And so in this case, for example, notice how they have these sketchy trees in here. So you can click on this, and you could either download this one, or you could also go under see more details. And if you go to SketchUp, we can actually find that 2D trees or plants collection. And we can go ahead and drop one or two of these into our scene. So for example, I'm gonna bring this tree in right here, and that's going to be a face me component, which means that it's going to face your camera. And then we'll just do the same thing over here. So we'll just create a short wall and kind of another plaza space over here. I'm just gonna make a copy of this tree over here. So now we're pretty close to what they have on the SketchUp website. There's a few other things that they've done, but I think we're gonna go ahead and call this good for right now. Let's go ahead and let's take this into layout. And so the way that we can take this into layout is we can create an elevation view. And so to do that, what we wanna do is we want to turn on parallel projection so that we get a straight on view like this. And then we want to click and find the view that gives us a straight on view. In this case, right, that's gonna be the right, or the, yeah, it's gonna be the right 
view right here. And so let's go ahead and let's set this up so we can take it into layout. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna to go to view, animation, and we wanna add this as a scene. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna call this front elevation like this. So now this view is pretty much ready to go. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my styles and I'm going to select a style and you can select the hidden line style or the construction documentation style. Or for me, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the shaded style right here. And then I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna update the scene. So the only other thing that we might want is we might wanna turn on shadows so that we get a little bit of depth on this. So we can turn on shadows and then we can kind of adjust where the shadows would be in our scene. So maybe something like this. Then I'm also going to turn my model axes off like this, and I'm gonna save that in my shaded style. So now this is ready to go into layout. So in order to send this to layout, what we need to do is we need to start by saving our model. So we're gonna do a file, save as, and then once we have this saved, we can do a file, send to layout. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna open up layout and we can choose a template. So there's a number of templates with title blocks in here that we can use. So let's go ahead and pick one of those. Maybe the simple serif, let's go with the RHD landscape right here. So what that's gonna do is that's going to create a page with our title block over here and our viewport over here. We're gonna go ahead and slide this over a little bit, but the one thing we do wanna do, um, because this actually looks pretty good right now, but the one thing we do wanna do is we wanna click on this viewport and make sure that we've set it to a scale. And so in this case, probably the closest two scales are gonna be either a quarter inch or three eighths of an inch. I'm gonna put it on three eighths of an inch just so I can be sure that it's gonna fit on my page. But now I've got this viewport in layout and what I could do is I could come in here and I could start adding different uh, different dimensions or titles or other things like that. And so notice how, since we do have this to scale, we could come in here and add things like dimensions to it. And we could adjust our style by clicking on this and going to our, like our font style or our text style or something like that. But getting this into layout is fairly easy. All right, so if you wanna learn more about how to create plans in layout, I get into it a lot more in depth in my course, which I will link to on this page. If you have any questions about anything we did, leave a comment down below and let me know. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.